All right, we're going to go to college football, John. This Saturday, Florida State, Georgia Tech kick off the college football season. And then the following Thursday, the 29th, and Friday the 30th, and Saturday the 31st, the games really start to kick off. And one of those games that I think is interesting because most of the time the game one is a big-name team playing somebody very small that they're going to probably beat up pretty good, and that's the end of the game. And blah, blah. It's almost like preseason, right? But mm -hmm. Clemson, number 14, is going to be playing number one Georgia. So that's actually a pretty daggone big one. And it's obviously right there, ACC. It's on ABC. It's 11 o'clock, Mercedes from Atlanta. That's going to be a biggie. But where I wanted to go with this, though, John, is this. I'm excited for it. I know you are as well. But Dabo Sweeney has done something very interesting that not very many people are talking about. Dabo Sweeney does not get involved in the portal. Everybody else loves the portal, you know, from Alabama all the way to Washington to USC, all the way to Penn State. They are using the portal, and it's just mm -hmm. this whole thing. I love this quote that I heard from Dabo, John. He said, we sign guys who are transferring from high school. Now, I love, <laughs> I love that because that's the way it's always been, right? You go out, you find the best high school recruits, you bring them on. Maybe you get a kid who's a little bit younger. Now it's crazy because – now there's a guy out there, John, who's offered by Texas $9.2 million of NIL money. He graduates high school in 2026. Yes, I said 2026. Nine point two. He gets $2 million when he signs it, the letter of intent, and then $1.6 million each year after that. Not so bad. I mean, that's, that's where we're going in this crazy sport um, and, and what once was a great college sport. The money is absolutely flowing, but – I'm just curious, what do you think? The, forget all the other stuff. Dabo Sweeney, he's avoiding this whole thing. He's still winning nine, ten games a year. Um, is he doing the right thing? He says most guys in the portal are not good enough to play for us, which I love that line because that's a cocky line. But I, I love the fact that he's out there and he's like, why am I going to go to the portal? I've already got guys better than guys in the portal. <laughs> what do you think, though? Is he making a mistake? Because some of the alumni are not very happy. Well, um, quite frankly, I do think he's making a mistake, Pete, because we've seen um, how now under these new rules, uh, these players that do transfer and Michael Penix being one of them, Pete, um, you know, he was one of the top QBs in all of college football. He transfers up and goes to Washington and takes the Huskies that close to winning the national title. And... Um, he obviously gets uh, a lot of accolades, gets drafted, and is playing great in the pros right now. So I do think he's missing out. I, I like the portal. The main thing I like about it, Pete, is not that, you know, teams that have the NIL money that can stack um, their roster. I don't like that quite as much. But what I do like is if you're behind a guy that's like just a killer and you don't think you're going to see the field in a couple years unless he goes early into the NFL draft. Um, I like the idea that those kids can go find a place where they can play. Now, that's not Michael Penix. Michael Penix was a fabulous quarterback, but he'd had some injury issues. And he decided, hey, I got one more shot. I'm going to go to the best team I can go to. I get it. Um, and it wasn't a money thing. Um, but I think for other players – when they're stuck at a place where they're not going to play and they're not going to be able to transfer to Debo and Clemson Pete, because he's loaded with talent. Um, I, I think it's good for those guys, by the way, like Pete said, double when we kick off this weekend, it'll be Florida state favored by almost 12 over Georgia tech. Yeah. And that's a 12 uh, PM Eastern time game, which means basically an evening game in Dublin, Ireland, because it's probably about six hours ahead of the East Coast, five or six hours, I forget, Pete, but mm -hmm. that should be a pretty interesting game, and I can't wait to see college football back on TV. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. Uh, you know, I go back and forth on this whole portal thing. I think what they ought to do is be smart about, just like they, they are not smart about the NIL, you got to figure out a cap of some sort, and maybe you ought to have a cap of how many times can you get into the portal because we both know there are players who – will jump in the portal every single year and then get a new deal in the NIL every single year. 
And I'm not sure that that was the intent early on for what was going to happen, but that is what's happening out there. All right, we're going to jump to the NFL, John. There were six quarterbacks in the first 12 picks this year of the NFL draft, and they are all running and gunning and playing, and in some cases, winning the starting role. Now, J.J. McCarthy, in my opinion, was on his way with the Minnesota Vikings. He's out for the year because of a meniscus operation that he just got done doing, but I was curious what you think, John. I love the fact that Bo Nix, who everybody kind of, uh, this guy's, you know, he's not somewhere in the, I don't know how that ever came up. I, I still think he was the most accurate, incredible quarterback last year. The only thing I, I could agree with would be, well, you look at his age, he's already 24, 25 years old. Because some of these guys like he and Penix have been in college for six or seven years, John. So it's it's a different world than it once was. They're not 21-year-old men anymore. Now they're 24 or 5-year-old geriatrics coming out. But anyway, Bo Nix has already been they, – they've said, hey, look, the head coach said he's, he's our starter here for the Denver Broncos. I think that's pretty interesting. Caleb Williams, right in your backyard of Chicago, former backyard, um, he has looked good, but it's a very small sample set. But he has looked good. He's looked athletic. He's looked the role of the first pick in the draft. Uh, Adunze is unbelievable, so he's got receivers everywhere. Um, I know guys get bumped and bruised, so somebody I think I think I saw more the other day was bumped around a little bit. But they've got all the talent there. You got Joe Milton and, and Drake May. And, and Milton sitting out there, uh, he literally, John, was like the sixth or seventh round or something like that. And he's very competitive with Drake May, who was in the top uh, group. So I think there's a lot of different quarterbacks that are going to be starting this year in the NFL, these young guys. Is there anybody stands out for you outside of probably Caleb? Because Caleb looks damn good, man. Caleb looks great. Daniels looks great, Pete. And you and I were both on his uh, bandwagon. Um, because I just thought that kid just had something special, yeah. and I still do. Um, so is Daniels going to be like a Lamar Jackson kind of player, Pete? Um, is Milton going to be like a Tom Brady kind of player? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Brady was taken in the sixth round. So these guys are not always, you know, soothsayers, or they don't have a crystal ball. They're going by... Um, you know, various measures, in some cases, money ball kind of measures. Um, in other cases, they just fall in love with a kid at uh, the combine. Mm -hmm. But Milton is one of those guys, you you said it, Pete, he came from Michigan mm -hmm. um, and then transferred out of Michigan, I believe, right? Yep, to Tennessee. Yep. Yep, over to Tennessee. And he is a strong kid mm -hmm. um, who is now a full-grown man, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is dueling for that starting spot you're exactly right so you know does that remind me a little bit you know again i'm not saying he's tom brady folks but i'm saying it's a little bit like brady's story where mm -hmm. you know he slips down to the sixth round tom brady and this one milton slips even a little bit further but i think they got a steal on this kid pete and yep. so that's the kid that i would watch um other than the obvious ones that we've already spoken of but you you were hot on bo nick's forever, Pete. Mm -hmm. um, I love him. And I, I'm happy that Caleb so far has looked like the kind of kid that could really make himself a great NFL player as well. Well, the great thing for you in Chicago is I think that uh, he came to the right, the right group because he's got a decent offensive line, great receivers, great uh, tight ends. I think your tight end commits great. Um, good running backs. I mean, You've got the, a good situation for a guy to walk into. You're not dilapidated. You're not just completely garbage, and you got a brand new quarterback. You've got a lot of pieces of the puzzle around him. So I think that's pretty exciting. Anyway, it's a lot of fun, man. And and college football kicking off this Saturday is even better. Yep, from Dublin, Ireland, folks. Um, and uh, I, I just love Pete that we're getting back on the football thing even though we've got the DNC in Chicago this week, you and I are more focused on football in Chicago than the Democratic National Convention, which is a good thing. Yeah.